Hello and welcome to my channel. This is my charcoal drawing of a beer mug and I used these Kohinoor Jaconda charcoal pencils along with some other tools that I'm going to talk about a little bit later. Um, as for my reference photo I kind of put something together in Photoshop um, so that I could get the image that I like. One of the final touches was also uh, removing the edge of the table here. I kind of faded it into the dark because I felt that this clean edge was kind of competing with my main subject, so I think it looks better this way. This is al also a good demonstration on how to draw objects made out of glass if you're using charcoal. Obviously, I'm going to be using erasers a lot, especially a pencil eraser, but also a kneaded eraser a little bit. So if you like beer, or if you like drawing, and I like both, keep watching, and I'm going to show you how I did it. Now let's get on with the drawing process. Uh, it's going to be a slightly smaller uh, size of paper this time, about 7 times 9 inches. I'm going to say a few more words about my tools, but before I do, uh, I want to remind you that if you like my content you should subscribe, give me a like and comment on my videos because each and every one of those actions means a lot for my channel because if you don't interact, if you don't give a like or subscribe um, then YouTube doesn't recommend my videos to other people and you often don't get to see some of my newer videos so if you uh, appreciate my content, if you like what I do Make sure you give me a like and tell me what you think about my drawings. I'm going to start with this sketch. I do the sketch with a graphite pencil most of the time. It's going to be this 2H graphite pencil. And the paper that I'm working on is about 190 GSM. It's a fairly smooth paper, but I mostly like it because it's a little bit thicker. The tools that I'm using are mostly these Kohino charcoal pencils. Kohino Jaconda charcoal pencils. I'm going to be using the soft one most of the time. Um, and in addition to that, I may also use a bit of fine charcoal. Fine charcoal is a natural charcoal that comes in sticks. It's a little bit softer and lighter. And also, um, I'm going to use some charcoal powder that I'm going to create by sharpening my pencils. And as for the erasers, I'm going to be using the Kohinoor pencil eraser and the kneaded eraser. I'm also going to use some tutilians and brushes for blending. But a lot of the blending will be done with my finger. Your fingers are also pretty good blending tools. So here I started working around the outline of the beer mug once I finished. Once I finished my sketch, I started working around the outline with my charcoal pencil and I started filling in <coughs> this area which I in intended to be darker uh, I wanted a slightly darker scene I wanted to look like a, a glass of beer, a mug of beer just uh, resting on a table maybe in a dark corner of a pub so that's kind of the atmosphere that I'm trying to create I will create some variations in terms of the amount of value in the background. I'm not going to have it all black. But one of the key things here is cleaning up the edges because the edge between my main subject and the background needs to be clean. I need clean edges there. Some of the edges on the main subject uh, are not going to be clean. That depends on the shape of the object that I'm drawing. But the edge between the background and the main subject has to be clean. So this is kind of like a still life type of charcoal drawing. And why not use this object for my still life drawing? I, uh, Like I said, I like beer and I like drawing, so why not combine these two? So I started working on the background first with my charcoal pencil, but then I wanted to fill it in uh, a little bit more quickly and a bit more smoothly without creating any texture. So I 
uh, poured down some charcoal powder and I created that charcoal powder by sharpening one of my pencils and then I started spreading that charcoal powder to charcoal dust, whatever it is to cover the background, to create that dark background but close to the edges of the glass I had to be a little bit more careful so I was pushing all the way to the edge of the mug carefully but trying not to go over the line, not to go over the edge and to do this you also have to rotate the drawing, you have to rotate the paper a little bit otherwise you won't be able to uh, be precise enough I mean your finger is not exactly the most precise of blending tools but it does work, it works really well with charcoal and you can get a really smooth dark background but the thing is that it's not precise enough and you often have to clean up the edges so how do I clean up the edges? Well one of the ways to do that is to push the charcoal all the way to the edge using blending tools such as tutilians or brushes and of course if I mess up the edge a little bit I can always clean it up a little bit with, uh, with that pencil eraser that I just used. Another way to work on the edges is to use brushes. Uh, you should be careful with this because they tend to take away a little bit of the value. I don't want to make the background lighter here. But what I want to do is push the charcoal just to the edge and in order to do that, to achieve that effect, you have to rotate your drawing and you have to point the tip of the brush towards the edge and that way you're pushing the charcoal to the edge and no further. If you want to achieve a blurry edge, you do the opposite. You point the tip of the brush away from the edge. That's one of the tips when blending and trying to preserve clean edges. So here I did a little bit more of the additional cleaning up. It just, to, just to make sure that uh, the area that I'm going to be working on is cleaned because I'm going to have some highlights on it. I don't want to mess it up and also to clean up that upper edge which I really want to stand out in a sharp contrast against the background. So this beer mug has a very interesting shape. It's uh, what is I believe referred to as a krug. So it's kind of like uh, uh, kind of like a uh, beer mug with uh, dimples and of course the size and the number of those dimples can vary depending on the manufacturer, depending on the type and the model of the, of the beer mug. Uh, but this one has a really nice shape and I am first going to draw this foamy part of the beer inside the glass inside the mug. So one part of the glass here is kind of uh, transparent so some of the background is showing through but it's a little bit lighter because because of the reflectiveness of the glass but the rest of it is obscured by that foam and I wanted there to be a little bit more foam on this beer. I like my beer foamy. Some people don't like foam, I like it. Um, but notice that I'm also dragging my brush softly over this uh, white foam because it's not going to remain completely white. I want to give it a little bit more value so that I could create some lighter details on it. So even, so, even sometimes details that appear white to you need to be shaded, they need to be a little bit darker so that you could add some even lighter details or some highlights on top of those. So you always need that range of value and you really need to use your lightest lights and your darkest darks sparingly. This is not exactly the case here because we have a large dark area but I wanted that dark background but on the object that I'm drawing which is the focus of my drawing, we're going to have a nice range of value, we're going to have a lot of, a lot of contrast uh, between these uh, smaller details, darker, lighter details. So now I'm going to draw some of these lighter details in this foamy part. Here at the top I'm going to use my kneaded eraser and I kneaded it into a teardrop shape 
so that I can have a nice dip and I can erase really small shapes that look like uh, small bubbles and that's why I had to shade uh, the the foamy part a little bit so that it's not completely white otherwise these bubbles wouldn't show up the rest of the work on these highlights I did with a pencil eraser and I cleaned up the upper edge of the foam a little bit so that it would stand out and then I added some more of these suggestions of of those bubbles in the in the beer, in the foam of the beer um, I've been drinking a little bit more beer than usual these last couple of days I don't really drink a lot to be honest I do like beer but I normally have just one or two I never get drunk <laughs> I just like the taste and I have one maybe two beers at most I'm also going to add some darker details to this uh, to this foam because it's it's kind of transparent or semi-transparent so we can see some of the bubbles uh, through it and so, some of the movement of that uh, foam and uh, liquid inside there uh, behind the glass so now I'm working around the handle here and I'm going to cover that area with my charcoal pencil and make that dark as well I have to make I have to try to make all of this smooth because um, the thing is that if you don't blend this very smoothly you're gonna have some texture in the background and if you have texture in the background that's going to be a little bit distracting and it's going to be competing with the details in the foreground and I don't want that uh, the dark background is already kind of um, imposing because um, it can swallow up my main subject if I don't uh, shade it with a sufficient amount of value and if I don't have a sufficient amount of contrast and range of value. This is a messy process as you can see if you're blending with your fingers so it's a good idea to have a paper towel at hand. So now I'm working around the rest of the edges of the mug um, and I'm also going to do a bit of shading on this table here I'm going to add a bit of value to the table and first I'm going to go lightly uh, I'm, I did that with a, vine, uh, with a piece of vine charcoal because vine charcoal is a bit lighter and it's going to be easier for me to manipulate it and to decide if I want to make it darker or lighter uh, but the rest of the background needs to be a bit darker so I'm going to do that with my soft charcoal pencil now as you can see uh, I still haven't started defining the shape of the mug but I'm going to do that soon enough because uh, one of the things that I decided to do first was to make some indications of where some of the lightest reflections will be so I kind of tried to avoid pushing in too much charcoal into those areas where some of the lightest parts of the mug will be because the thing is that th this is a very um, complex um, shape complex shape made out of glass and it's obviously going to be very reflective and we're going to have a lot of these uh, uh, lighter areas but uh, some of them are going to be lighter than the others so you need to have that range of value some parts of those uh, highlights are going to be very light almost white others are going to be kind of more uh, gray or light gray so I want to have that range of value and I want to capture that contrast uh, but uh, I'm, I'm gonna try to keep some of these areas clean to keep them a little bit lighter uh, but it's not like I can't erase later I, I mean charcoal can be erased but it, the thing is that sometimes you can't uh, erase it very clean and you end up with grayish areas that are not as light or as white as you want them to be I started with, the, uh, with some vine charcoal around the edges where the mug is a little bit lighter and more transparent 
and I'm going to, well not transparent, but a little bit more reflective around those areas. And I'm going to add a bit more value here around the middle. And that's why I added a bit of, um, a bit of that charcoal powder. I'm going to push that in using a combination of brushes and my fingers. It doesn't have to be too precise. I, um, I'm not too worried about smaller details right now, honestly. If I go over some of the indications of smaller shapes, that's not a huge problem. Right now I'm more concerned with the overall amount of value on the mug and uh, like I said, I, I'm trying to define the darkest areas first and uh, trying to create that contrast bet between some of the lighter areas and the darker areas and once I do that I'm going to be able to focus on the details. It, things are going to be a little bit clearer to me because uh, otherwise if you start from the details that can work sometimes depending on the drawing but uh, sometimes that can make it very very difficult to create uh, those larger contrasts and those larger relationships that you really need if you want to show the shape of the object the volume and the depth in the object and this object has a very complex shape as I've already mentioned it has these uh, dimple like shapes in the glass uh, I really like this shape of a glass or this shape of a mug. I have one that I use for drinking not only beer but all kinds of beverages. I just like it beca because of its shape and its uh, robust size. Um, and, um, and like I said, it's a very complex surface um, because, uh, because of all those dimples. And I need to try to find a way to navigate through that complex shape and to explain that shape to the viewer. But it's not going to be easy because uh, a lot of these reflections, these lighter and darker areas, are kind of confusing. Uh, they're confusing to me, the, the, artists who, the artist who is trying to analyze the shape, who is trying to find a way to convey uh, this shape to the viewer. But I have to try to make sure that it's not confusing to the viewer. I have to try to find a way to simplify and approximate so that the viewer can immediately discern the shapes so that they can immediately understand what they see. Now it's some, in, in some parts of this process it's going to get a little bit messy and it's going to look like well it's going to look like uh, nothing uh, like it's supposed to look like but eventually hopefully I will get it to get it to look like a like an actual beer mug another effect that I unintentionally achieved I think was that the beer in the mug ended up looking a little bit darker because of the background maybe I should have made everything a little bit lighter because the beer in my original reference photo that I kind of prepared for this uh, was regular beer, not dark beer. But I do like dark beers, and um, if it ends up looking like a dark beer, I don't have a problem with that. So here I'm trying to define this uh, lower shape, uh, lower uh, part of the mug on the left, uh, which has uh, these slightly longer shapes, kind of parallel, elongated shapes. Uh, which uh, I don't really know how to describe them, but they are slightly protruded while the shapes at the top of the mug look like a row of dimples. Um, so obviously the design uh, of mugs varies from one to the other and there's going to be some smaller individual differences, but my goal here is to try to make this one as close to the reference that I initially studied as possible and also to make it as realistic as possible to the viewer who um, hasn't seen any references, who doesn't know what I was looking at while, what I, while I was drawing. So I'm doing a bit more blending with my finger, adding a bit more of these darker, uh, darker areas, areas of darker value, because I felt that I wanted to make it even darker. 
I didn't want I didn't want the background to be much darker than my main subject and I cleaned up the edge between the beer and the foamy part of the beer at the top and I think it looks good now so now I'm going to be focusing most on the on this shape of the of the main part of the mug and kind of defining these dimples and I'm going to do most of this work with a pencil eraser um, the pencil eraser like I said is a Kohinoor pencil eraser which can be sharpened like a pencil it's not quite as thin or precise as Tumbo Mono Zero eraser but it gets the job done for me and I'm going to use it to pull some of these uh, smaller highlights. Now here's the thing uh, some of them, as I've already mentioned, need to be lighter than the others. So, so some of these highlights, some of these lighter areas, uh, reflective areas, are going to be grayish. They're not going to be quite as quite white. Others are going to be almost completely white. So I need to be able to retain that contrast. And one of the ways to do that is to you, you can actually control that with your pencil eraser because if you use a clean tip. A clean pencil eraser you can erase a lighter whiter shape and also uh, if you use a bit more pressure you're going to remove more of the charcoal but if you just drag your pencil eraser gently over the surface surface of the paper that you covered with charcoal then you're going to be lifting up or moving away just a little bit of that charcoal dust and you're going to create some shapes and lines which aren't as white which are a little bit more on the grayish side of the spectrum so that way by controlling the amount of uh, charcoal that you have on your pencil eraser or how clean it is essentially and controlling the amount of pressure and the type of your strokes you can also control the amount of value you are creating or removing because your pencil eraser is a drawing tool it's a drawing tool, not a correcting tool, and you're using it to draw lighter lines and lighter shapes in the same way that you're using a, ch a charcoal pencil to draw darker lines or darker shapes. But this way you're doing what is sometimes referred to as negative drawing, which is basically drawing by taking, taking away the material, by removing the material, either graphite or charcoal. Basically you're removing value and you're creating lighter uh, indications of lighter shapes uh, I've done most of the work on the upper part of the mug and I'm moving on to the lower part of the mug which has a slightly different shape but so far I think these reflections are looking pretty nice and already I think the viewer can discern the shapes of those dimples even though um, they are kind of being distorted uh, a little bit by all of these reflections in the dark. I added an indication of some shadow at the table uh, at the bottom of the mug and now I'm going to be working around the mug to define the outer shape before I move on to the bottom to this glass bottom of the mug which also has some confusing and complex um, reflections but I don't really need to uh, draw it exactly as it is in real life uh, I, I can just try to imitate it a little bit using uh, this uh, using these contrasts between darker and lighter areas and I can just try to create some indications of reflections that kind of that kind of makes sense but they don't have to be perfect I think that uh, this contrast that I'm achieving will be enough to captivate the attention of the viewer and trick the viewers eye into thinking that they're looking at an object that is actually made out of glass uh, so I don't know how many of my viewers uh, like to drink beer or how they feel about beer it's just a subject like any other uh, this mug of beer I mean you can choose whatever you like for for still life drawing I think this is a very interesting object uh, if you want to practice drawing in charcoal um, my I've, I 
I've tasted, uh, I tried a lot of beers in my life. Uh, I mostly drink uh, domestic, uh, locally produced beers. But um, I don't mind trying some of the foreign ones as well. Uh, I do like dark beers also. I like Guinness. It's one of the most famous ones, I guess. But from the local or the regional brands, I liked the uh, Montenegrin uh, Nikšićko dark beer. And for a while there was also uh, a Serbian beer called Dark Lion. But its production was eventually discontinued. Uh, I really liked that beer. I don't know why they stopped producing it. Uh, the uh, the regular, the lighter version of this beer is uh, more popular and more established, but the dark beer was only uh, produced, it was only made for a couple of years. I actually, uh, uh, I was actually friends uh, with, uh, with a guy whose wife worked in the production uh, in the factory and the beer factory, brewery, whatever it's called, and I asked her why did you stop making this dark beer and she said because only you and one more guy were drinking it. So I said okay, I guess it wasn't that popular, but I did like it a lot. Nowadays I just drink, uh, mostly drink uh, Yellen, which means deer, uh, out of the local domestic beers. And as for the foreign ones, I mostly drink, drink Stella. But like I said, I don't really drink very often. I just have one beer, maybe two beers per week. And I highly recommend that you don't overdo it either even if you do like beer. Anyway, that's enough about beverages. I want to get back to the drawing process. As you can see, I did the work on the handle and I shaded the handle by drawing the darker areas first and then kind of pushing the charcoal uh, away from the darker areas to the lighter area, leaving that lighter area in the middle and creating that nice highlight without much effort. So basically I just shade the darker areas first and then push the charcoal gently towards the lighter areas and then whatever is left in between is the highlight. So that's the quickest and easiest way to creating, uh, to creating a highlight and creating a nice transition between the darker areas and the lighter areas. I also need to define uh, this area around the, where the handle is joined to, to the rest of the mug by adding a few more uh, of those shapes and reflections. But once I'm done with that, I'm just going to have to clean up the edges a little bit and I'm going to have to start working on the rest of the background, the lower part of the background. So I wanted the, the mug to be resting on the table, like a regular wooden table with some interesting looking grain. And uh, as I've already explained, I wanted the scene to appear a little bit darker, like maybe a dark corner of a pub. And uh, I'm hoping to achieve that atmosphere. I'm uh, hoping that I'll be able to convey that atmosphere to the viewer. Uh, now I'm going to do a little bit more work on the texture of this table. I'm going to try to imitate the grain of the table, but because uh, it's kind of pointing towards us, um, I need to make these uh, sideways, I need to wiggle my uh, pencil sideways because these lines are kind of uh, seen at an angle and, uh, and these lines, these uh, horizontal variations in the shape are foreshortened, these lines are foreshortened so I'm kind of wiggling my pencil to imitate uh, the shape of that wood grain as seen from this angle 
and I'm also adding a bit of random texture on top just to make everything a little bit more interesting and a little bit darker. I'm going to do the best I can to imitate the texture of the wood but it doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm adding some highlights using a pencil eraser just to make this look a little more three-dimensional because when you have those areas of darker value against standing against the areas of lighter value then the viewer can start to feel like maybe something is uh, slightly raised above the rest of the surface of the table it feels or it looks like a kind of a rough surface you can almost feel like it's a rough uh, textured wooden surface and of course this grain of the wood needs to be a little bit irregular with some of these uh, lines and patterns going every which way and uh, varying a little bit in terms of their shape uh, direction and also in terms of the spacing in between them I'm muddying everything a little bit with a brush to soften the texture and then I'm going over that once again with a charcoal pencil to add a little bit more of that texture in some areas especially in the front part or the, the lower part rather of the paper where the table is closest to us so I want the, that part of the scene to have a little bit more detail and a little bit more texture I'm going to also refine this shadow a bit more and uh, add a bit more value under the mug itself and uh, soften the edges of that shadow a little bit with a brush. I use uh, these, uh, I use a couple of different brushes. I, sometimes I use hard bristle brushes, sometimes slightly softer synthetic brushes, but it's mostly the way you use them. Now here I'm going to try to do something with the background. I don't want it to be completely dark, so I'm just going to dab a little bit either with uh, a paper towel or erasers just to maybe create some suggestions of lighter value, areas of lighter value, some lighter shapes in the background. I don't need to define anything. I'm just going to leave that to the viewer's imagination, like maybe uh, there is something going on in the background, maybe Maybe there are some lights there, maybe there are some lighter shapes, some other pieces of furniture, maybe even some people in the background. I'm going to leave that to the viewer's imagination. Uh, but I'm going to soften that a little bit with a large brush. And uh, once I'm done with that, I'm going to fix these corners where the, where the, uh, the paper was taped down to this cardboard just so that I could complete the scene. I don't want to leave these white corners. Um, I'm also going to use this uh, pencil eraser just to add a few more details, lighter details, to this texture of the wood of the table. So, because some of it was lost in the blending and the, and the brushwork, so I'm adding some of those highlights again trying to make uh, these uh, lines appear more three-dimensional, like three-dimensional shapes, not just a bunch of uh, two-dimensional black lines. I want the surface of the table to feel a little more rough, rough and a bit more three-dimensional, like there's a bit more depth in there. I'm also, use, I'm also going to use the pencil eraser to maybe create some suggestions of some light sources in the in the background, whatever. Of course the edges of the mug need to be clean and initially I was also cleaning up the edges of the table itself, the, uh, that uh, upper edge of the table behind the mug. And uh, while I was looking at it I wasn't really sure what it was that I didn't like. I didn't. There was something about the table that I didn't really like, and I didn't really. I couldn't really put my finger on it. It wasn't exactly the texture of the table. It wasn't the mug. It wasn't the background. There was something about the the background I didn't like, and eventually I realized that 
I didn't like that clean edge of the table and uh, I decided to remove it to fade it but before I be, before I did that I already put my signature in the in the lower left corner because I thought that I was going to finish my drawing but then I, as I was examining the drawing in my composition I just decided that I didn't like that clean edge of the table and I decided to fade it a little bit, fade it into the dark area behind and that really produced the effect that I wanted uh, this way there was no clean edge to compete with the clean edges of my subject and my subject started to look a lot better I want to thank you for watching this video and don't forget to check out my other videos I'm going to see you in the next one, bye for now